evolution is a change in a species or population over time. Imagine with me for a moment a family or couple as an individual organism. When this organism mates, or rather, when families marry or cohabit, the population grows and changes. Now, an evolution of a species cannot be made by reviewing one lineage. Instead, we must review multiple, and the same goes for marriage evolution. Now, there are three factors which we must analyze in order to show this evolution. Type of family, couple relations, and parental roles. Television show creators analyze the population and come up with an idealized family. One that not all of the population can identify with, but one that a majority of the population can relate to. And in doing so, we can then draw conclusions about family life, family structure, from viewing these television shows. And we can draw about conclusions about what the decade was like. The first shot I've analyzed is Father Knows Best. Father Knows Best serves as an example of your typical nuclear family, and the one that I've used as my control group for the research. Now, therefore, any changes or mutations that occurred in the family unit were compared against Father Knows Best. Also, a nuclear family was defined as a family that consists of a father, a mother, and their children. As you can see from this DVD box set cover, the father is clearly the head of the family. He is on the top of the stack. He's the wisest. We can also see this from an episode titled The Big Test. So let's take a step back. The father, he's the breadwinner. He takes home, he's wise, he takes home some money for the family, he provides for them. He is considered the wisest one in the family. Now the mother, she cooks, she cleans, she does, she does everything that is considered your typical feminine task in the 50s. Now, in the episode titled The Big Test, Bud, their son, is accused of cheating after doing well on an exam. During this time, the parents have a parent-teacher conference, and the father discusses the matter with the, the teacher. Now, when Margaret, the mother, is then, wants to intervene because she feels that she has the right to, she is given a patronizing look from the teacher for doing so. So we can draw conclusions that the mother in this era, in this decade, would step back from situations whether she wanted to or not. Now, we also, um, there's a study by June and Timothy Frazier that states that Father Knows Best apparently reflected what 1950s America wanted to believe was its typical family, evidenced by its long runtime. So what I've drawn conclusions is that every show that I've analyzed in my research had a long runtime and a high Nielsen rating. A Nielsen rating is a television audience measuring database. And if these are both long, I assume that the viewers of the television show accepted the content of the show and also had showed commitment to watching it daily or weekly. Now, of course, the evolution of the family could not be made by leaving out I Love Lucy. <laughs> so I Love Lucy serves as your nuclear family with an interracial marriage as well as a strong female lead. And we can see from episodes of I Love Lucy that Lucy is constantly trying to find independence from the home, the household, their task, and especially the husband. Now, the husband is still the breadwinner. He provides for the family. He also takes on paternalistic roles <coughs> when necessary. If the mother fails to complete her tasks or does something wrong, then the father will take a paternalistic role and teach lessons. We can see here that Ricky is teaching Lucy a lesson in financing by cutting off her charge accounts. We can definitely see Lucy's reluctance to giving her him her money. But of course she does, did so because that was what happened in the 50s. If we contrast the role of the husband with the role of the wife, the wife, again, caretaker for the children, caretaker for the home, groceries, expenses, all of those things. And in a study titled Gender and Family in Television, Golden Age and Beyond, Andrews Press states the spirited heroine of I Love Lucy 
was wife to Ricky and later mother to little Ricky, yet she never gave up her repeated attempts to escape the divines of her domestic situation. To start, a, to enter show business, start a business, get a job, or generally play a role in the extra domestic sphere. Now, these adventurous attitudes of women in the 50s to stray from the normal femininity uh, allowed Lucy to show her wanting to do this in episodes such as Lucy writes a play, Lucy writes a novel, Lucy gets into pictures. Now these attitudes open way for the adventurous attitudes and liberal points of views in the 70s. The 70s was a time of growing feminism. As divorce rates increased, so did remarrying. If we look at the Brady Bunch, we can see that this is one of the first examples of marriage of re marriage as remarrying, when there's a family that has been in a previous relationship, and the Brady Bunch shows this. If we look at the sh a show titled The Grass is Always Greener, one of the episodes in the Brady Bunch, Michael and Carol, the two figureheads of the family, have an argument. They said, well, who has a harder job when dealing with the children? Is it the father when he's dealing with the boys, or is it the mother when she's dealing with the girls? Though, in the end, the show does depict the father as a better playmate for the boys and the mother as a better playmate for the girls. The mere extension of these roles and the act of doing so shows that they were open to extending their help to each other in their relationship. We can take a look at the DVD box set cover. What is so pivotal about this is the fact that neither the mother nor the father takes the center slot. Neither of them take precedence over the other. So we can see the sprouting of this partnership that happens. Now, something particularly interesting is that the maid takes the center slot. And what I analyzed was that the maid takes on various aspects of both Michael and Carol. So we can see that combination just coming in the center of the DVD box set cover and in the center of their relationship. In a study titled The Epidemiology of Divorce, it shows that there has been an increase in remarrying with the running time of the Brady Bunch. If we look at this chart, it shows that first marriage and divorce rates are lower than that of remarrying, suggesting that people are more comfortable with remarrying have they been in a previous relationship. So the Brady Bunch and the, its liberal points of views offered solutions to the 80s and 90s and open ways for women to be in the professional workforce, which was very exciting. So the Cosby Show shows this, and the Cosby Show uh, goes into the 80s and 90s, and we can see that there is a question of who has the authority in the relationship, but the Cosby Show answers it as there is the same amount of authority in the relationship. Just by merely looking at this DVD box set cover, we can see that Cliff, the father, takes the foreground, but he is sitting down, and Claire takes the background, but she's standing up. So there's neither of them are taking precedence over the other, and that is just your sprouting of partnership and really strengthening that idea. The Cosby Show also introduces women into the professional workplace, and not just in a cook job or, or, or something that may be considered lower in society, but something that is considered higher as a lawyer, which is what, what Claire is. Now in season three, Cliff takes on a maternal role when Claire pulls her nerve. Now, what does that mean? He does every task that Claire normally does, but he also does his task, so he takes on both of them. And this act of doing this shows that he wants to do this, he wants to help with the relationship, and it's not considered demeaning to do a task that is considered a mother's task. Also, in an episode titled Mother May I, Season 3, Episode 5 of The Cosby Show, both the father and mother make the rules and enforce them. If we compare that to Father Knows Best, the father made the rules and the mother enforced them. So, the, the episode that I have, Mother May I, Vanessa, their daughter, wants to wear makeup. But the rule in the Cosby household is that you have to be 15 to do so. Now, makeup is generally considered something of a feminine quality. 
But, so it would seem most fitting for Claire to take that. But instead, they go together as partners to discuss the matter with Vanessa. So, we can see that Claire is a zygous for women in the 80s and 90s. She showed that women could be both powerful and successful in the home and the workplace. Now, it has been the, a desire for women to be powerful and successful in the home and the workplace since before the 50s. But the 90s made it seem both accessible and achievable. So, the evolution of marriage has gone through quite a metamorphosis since the 90s. Modern family introduces three different family structures. The typical nuclear family, which we see from Father Knows Best, a remarried and interracial family, which we see from I Love Lucy and uh, the Brady Bunch, and a new family structure gaining increasing support in the 21st century, a gay partnership. By looking again at the DVD box set cover, we can see that everyone is on relatively equal ground. No parent or family member takes precedence over the other. If you look at the foreground and background, uh, where people are standing, it's the same way as the Cosby show. There's partnerships that are happening. One of the most impressive feats of modern family was they, when they introduced a gay partnership into the homes of many Americans. And modern family also recalibrated what is considered a stereotype of males and females. And that recalibration is just that a stereotype can be nothing more than a trait that a male or female can have. Also, in season five, Modern Family made history by discussing Mitchell and Cameron's long-awaited marriage plans. In a study titled The Deinstitutionalization of American Marriage, it states that, Andrew Trillin states, marriage has undergone a process of deinstitutionalization a weakening of social norms that define partners' behavior over the past few decades. Examples are presented involving increasing number and complexity of cohabiting unions and the emergence of same-sex marriage. So modern family has opened Americans' minds to the idea of gay relations. Now, modern family portrays drastically different ideas of what the family unit, the family structure is normally. But parenthood portrays your typical nuclear family, except for two differences. There is a female-dominated household and a single mother home. When we look at the DVD box set cover, we see that parenthood shows the parents as the roots from which the kids grow by. In parenthood, there is a female-dominated household, and we can see that is this couple right here. In it's Julia and Joel. And Julia, she is the primary income provider for the household. Now, there, by a research titled Breadwinner Moms by Pew Research Center, women making more than their husbands has increased since the 60s. So the idea that women are a female-dominated household is becoming more <coughs> popular. And in parenthood, Julia has to step down from her job because she feels the need that she needs to be part of the family more, she needs to take care of the kids. And in doing so, we see that she struggles with dealing with the fact that she is a stay-at-home parent. And we can make those conclusions that women that are in high positions that step down from their job due to their kids have trouble adjusting to the fact that they are the stay-at-home parent and that their other half is going to resume the job of the primary income provider, a job which was once theirs. Now, according to Pew Research, 10 findings about women in the workplace, among parents, women are more likely to experience child-related disturbances than men. And a child-related disturbances is, <coughs> say, a mother needs to go pick up her child from school if he or she is sick. Also, 27% of women in the family will give up their job to take care of their kids. So we can definitely see that there is this shifting that's currently happening, that women are trying to back away from the family, but are just having difficulties doing so. 
Now, not all women have the opportunity to step down from their job or, or stay, stay home because they still need money. And this comes from single motherhood homes. And now, of course, parents, it could be male or female. So parents that uh, are in a single parent home, parents must teach their kids important life lessons alone. They don't have a partner. They don't have help doing so. And we can see this from Sarah Braverman. She struggles with being both the maternal and paternal figureheads for her children. And right here in the DVD box I cover, we'll put out the Sarah Braverman. She's on her own. Now, from modern family to father knows best, we can see that there has been an evolution of marriage from a paternally dominated household to a partnership between two parents, even leaning towards a female-dominated household. So society's definition of, definition of marriage has transformed into a partnership that is not limited to only a man and a woman. Women are also taking on sole or primary income provider. They are taking, up, taking on higher positions in society. Higher positions such as Hewlett Packard's CEO, Margaret C. Whitman. There is a study, Breadwinner Moms, that says there has been an increase in the past five decades of women being the sole or primary income provider for the family. And that is involved in four in ten households. Now, of course, this transition from women making more than their husbands and them being the primary sole or sole income provider has been transformational and is not the only mutation that has occurred in the family unit, but it does prove to be the most transformational. Women will take on the role of the damsel in shining armor and save their knights in distress. <laughs> Thank you.